As we all saw in the most recent Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star video, Shane Dawson is signing a multi million dollar makeup deal. But the question that we're gonna be trying to answer today is how happy will it make Shane Dawson and what can we learn from it? But check this out. Before we get started, I need you to do me a favor. Down in the comments below, I need you to write down two numbers, all right? I want you to gauge happiness from a scale of one to 10. One being absolutely miserable, 10 being the happiest, you could ever be. All right, so if you personally were signing this makeup deal as Shane Dawson on a scale of one to 10, how happy would you be? Now, the second number I need you to write down is if you had to have a limb amputated, how happy would you be on a scale of one to 10? Write down those numbers as the intro rolls. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And sometimes what I like to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community, give some context to them, and just try to see what we can learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you're not yet, follow me over on Instagram and Twitter, at The Rewired Soul. All right, so are you digging the Shane Dawson series with Jeffree Star? I am. Like, it's it's really cool. I love seeing all the behind the scenes. And I said this on Twitter the other day too, like Shane Dawson, like it's, it's awesome seeing him just like fully dive into this. Like the dude's passion and motivation, like it inspires me and I hope it inspires a lot of you as well. So yeah, obviously in this recent episode, you know, they got on the call with Morphe and <laughs> all the dancing and talking, like, oh, it was great. I was, I was sitting there wondering, I was like, is Morphe gonna watch this? And like, what are they gonna think? You know, seeing like the other side of the deal that's being made, right? But anyways, like we said, like we're, we wanna talk about happiness, right? And gauging happiness and how happy will we be? Because something that I thought for many years and something that many of us think uh, is that money will make us happy. And there's no denying it money will make us happy. Like I think it was Daniel Tosh who said in a stand-up one time, like, have you ever seen somebody sad on a jet ski? You know what I mean? <laughs> like money does play into our happiness. But what we wanna talk about today is how happy will it make us? Because when it comes to our mental health, like when we, when we look at what we don't have or when we look at where we want to be or what we wish we had, Something that many of us don't realize is that we are terrible judges of what will make us happy, all right? So, when talking about, you know, Shane Dawson signing this multi-million dollar deal, and I had you write down those numbers at the beginning of this, first, let's talk about this dude right here. This guy is Daniel Gilbert, okay? So, what you're seeing right now, this is from a TED Talk that I will link down in the description, uh, as well as a bunch of other sources, but check this out. So, Daniel Gilbert, he is a professor of positive psychology. He wrote a best-selling book called Stumbling on Happiness, all right? So, positive psychology is a, a realm of psychology where they completely study like happiness, what will make us happy. So something that Daniel Gilbert and his team found out through a ton of different studies is something called impact bias, all right? So what is impact bias? Impact bias is basically we suck at judging how happy things will make us or how miserable things will make us, such as how happy will this money make me, right? If this bad thing happens to me, how miserable will I be, all right? So that question I asked you at the beginning, one of the studies that Daniel Gilbert and his team did was they were trying to check out the, the happiness of someone who won the lottery uh, compared to somebody who became a paraplegic, all right? So in most studies like this one, they actually do it with multiple people to really get good results. So basically what they found out was when they talked to these people a year later, all right, both of them were just as happy. And you're sitting there like, what? How can somebody who won the lottery be as happy as somebody who is a paraplegic, all right? And this is because of something called hedonic adaptation, all right? So what is hedonic adaptation? What this is, is that we have a baseline, 
all right? We have a baseline for happiness and all these other feelings and emotions that we have. And what our body does and what our brain does is it gets us back to that baseline. So once something happens to us, whether it's good or bad, our mind adjusts to it, all right? So we get used to that state. So the people who won the lottery or someone like Shane Dawson who's getting that 20 million, right? A year from now, right? Their mind is gonna balance out with that. But like I asked you in the beginning, if you had a, a limb amputated or like these people who were studied who became paraplegics, their mind balanced them out for that experience. That is why they are equally as happy. Now, does that make you kind of question the things that you're trying to get, the things that you want? Maybe it's a raise or a promotion at work or the new car or the bigger house or the whatever it is. So why does this even matter? Well. Why this matters is something that's often talked about in Buddhist philosophy, but it's also something where there's some science rooted in it as well, which is the hedonic treadmill, all right? We want more. And based on our human evolution, like this is meant to help us survive, all right? Like if we just constantly became complacent and didn't want to achieve more, our species would die off. Right? So when you look at Shane Dawson, something that I've been asking myself is, he's gonna sign this multi-million dollar deal, become this makeup guru, right? And they're selling their merch and everything like that. And we know, we know for a fact, this makeup launch is gonna sell out like that, right? So as I look at this and I put myself in his shoes or you might be putting yourself in his shoes, like dang, I wish I got that much money, right? I think about a year from now, where's he gonna be? All right, and what's he gonna want? What's he gonna wanna achieve? And we want to achieve more. Now, make sure you stay tuned because I don't think this will mean that Shane Dawson won't be happy. And I'm gonna explain that in just a little bit. But because of the hedonic treadmill, we want more. In Buddhist philosophy, they call it the hungry ghost. All right, we constantly want more, 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 but we're never getting full. Um, I'm an addict in recovery, the way I kind of explain it to people is it's like having a glass with a hole in it, right? No matter how much you fill it up, it's never gonna get full. We just constantly keep needing more. And now that we know about the hedonic treadmill, we know about impact bias, they've done even more studies. So I am almost done with this amazing book. Oh, it's so good. It's called Moral Tribes by Joshua Green. It's a long book, but uh, I cannot stop reading it. Like I can't wait to finish this video and get back to finishing this book. But anyways, they did even more studies, right? And they they asked people, okay, if you started out with $5,000, how happy would you be if you got $15,000, right? And they gauged their happiness. Psh, be super happy, 5,000 to 15,000, that is dope. Well, then they asked another group of people, $40,000, and then you had $50,000. How happy would you be? they'd be pretty happy, right? But not as happy as the people going from 5,000 to 15,000. Now, what does that mean, all right? Because of impact bias, okay? And because of hedonic adaptation, because of the hedonic treadmill, we are not as happy when we already have stuff. So, for example, when I first got clean and sober, I had absolutely nothing. So everything was just a blessing, right? Just anything that I got, whether it was a job or I remember I didn't have a, a car or a driver's license for the first two years of my sobriety. And those things meant so much to me, right? But now I've been clean and sober for seven years and the things I acquire now, they're not giving me that same boost of happiness. So like I was talking about with Shane Dawson, where's he gonna be in a year from now? Or even you, when you look at that, you know, that promotion you want or the raise you want or the job you want, right? How happy will you be a year from now? Because even if you get that raise, like think about how many times we're like, I'm gonna leave this job if I don't get this raise and da 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 da. Well, what we know based on all of these different factors is that that raise won't make us nearly as happy as we think it will. Now, if you remember the first episode of the Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star series, um, I talked about this in another video that I'll link down in the pinned comment. Uh, he was talking about how the better his life gets, the more anxious he is about flying. And something that we talked about that we'll recap real quick is something called loss aversion, all right? So loss aversion, what this means is we hurt more when we lose something than we are happy when we gain something, all right? So to kind of put this in context, 
The more stuff we have, the more we're worried about losing it, all right? So we need to think about that as well. All the things that we wanna buy, all the things that we wanna get, all the things that we wanna own. When we have those things, now we're setting ourselves up because we have a bunch of stuff that we can lose. And I'm not saying don't acquire things, it's just that we need to be self-aware of this fact, all right? So what is the moral of this story? The moral of this story is good things are dope in the short term, but we're fooling ourselves if we think that they're going to equate to long-term happiness. So what is the solution? And this is why I think that Shane Dawson will be happy no matter what, all right? And happiness is obviously subjective and based on the person, but it's because of this. So how do we get out of these hedonic loops, right? It's how we look at our values and which values are important to us. So there's intrinsic and extrinsic values, okay? Intrinsic values are ones within us, right? They're not going anywhere. You're not taking these away from me. Extrinsic values are the things, the stuff, all right? So here's a dope little graphic that I found and it has a good list of intrinsic values versus extrinsic values. So intrinsic values, these are the things that we need to work on, all right? This is what is going to help us achieve the happiness, all right? So intrinsic values, affiliation, to have satisfying relationships with family and friends, self-acceptance, to feel competent and autonomous, community feeling, to improve the world through activism or socially creative projects, benevolence, preserving and enhancing the welfare of those with whom one is in frequent personal contact, the in-group, universalism, understanding, appreciation, tolerance, and protection for the welfare of all people and for nature. So what I'm saying about Shane Dawson is I think his intrinsic values are legit. He has an amazing relationship with Ryland. They're engaged, they're gonna get married. He has friends, he has Jeffrey, he has Morgan, he has Garrett, he has all these people, he has Andrew, everybody, and the pets. He has the pets too, right? So this is why I feel that Shane Dawson will continue to be satisfied no matter how much money he gains or how much money he loses. But what I want you to leave this video with is start checking in with yourself. Start running through your, your past too. Like this is something that I had to do. Like how happy did the things make me, right? Like when I was in my active addiction, I was making more money than I've ever made in my life, but I was miserable and I couldn't understand why. I was so confused. I'm like, why am I not happy? I have all the things, but they were extrinsic things. Now, today I have a lot less, but I'm happier than I've ever been. All right, and it's because I've been focusing on those intrinsic values. So I want you to leave this video asking yourself, how do you start focusing on the intrinsic values to kind of boost that long-term happiness rather than those just little short dopamine hits that we get from the stuff and the things. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying the books I've written on mental health or buys my merch and all that stuff. I appreciate you, all right? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.